Welcome to this session of the Psychic and Intuitive Ability Summit. I am Joy Taylor, your co-host. My guest for this session is Renee Rowe. The topic is overcoming intuitive blocks. Renee Rowe, intuitive counselor, teacher, and founder of the Akashic Learning Institute, offers individuals consultations, weekly group healing meditations, spiritual programs, and retreats in Mount Shasta, California. She is deeply grateful to witness her clients and students personally grow, heal, and create meaningful lives. Welcome, Renee. Oh, thank you, Joy. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It really is about that, isn't it? You know, supporting others in growing, healing, and creating meaningful lives. And, and how is it that intuition supports people in creating more meaningful lives? Yes, with intuition, you know, it does give you that ability to move beyond your human personality, human conditioning and feelings, and to perceive life from that greater perspective, seeing the bigger picture, which can easily lead to making those purposeful choices for yourself that allow you to live in that alignment of divinity alignment with a meaningful life. And and how has it supported you? Uh, I am known as a born intuitive and the intuitive gifts actually are present within my ancestral lineage. And my first memory is actually not when I was born, it was actually around two years old when my grandmother had passed away and I, I recall this memory of being in my crib and actually kind of feeling really confused because my grandmother had passed away. So she was no longer in her physical presence. So I was, I was able to see and communicate with her spirit. And she was trying to explain to me that she was, she was going to be part of my life, but in a different way. But it was, challenging to kind of to grasp that but that's my earliest memory wow and you say you were born and it's part of your lineage so tell tell mm -hmm. me more i'm curious yes yeah, so a lot of uh people in my family they do have intuitive gifts especially being impasse where they feel and sense the emotions of others uh, growing up, my father would actually tell me stories of my great grandfather. So this is my father's grandfather. His name was Harold, and he was actually known as a very gifted seer. But at his time, it wasn't so accepted. And so he kind of turned into a vagabond because the people in the towns would get kind of apprehensive around him because he, he was a gifted seer where he would have these visions of the future. And and so the visions of the future would come come true. And, you know, the people just weren't so receptive to it at that time. So we'd kind of travel around from town to town instead of staying put in, in one place. That is fascinating. Wow. And then so for you, you grew up with your grandma. Was she continually a part of your life in spirit form? She was. So she was uh, uh, in spirit form, which kind of uh, a spirit that uh, earthbound spirit that you can, you know, see and hear and communicate with more clearly. And she continued to actually live with me. And we had a just a really sweet relationship. And, and she continued to live with me until I want to say around my mid 20s, where she actually decided then to kind of go through a full transition where it kind of feels that they transition into kind of being this angel that watches over you instead of being more earthbound, where you have more of that clear connection. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I really enjoyed just developing that relationship with her. So as a child, I, what else did you um, experience in terms of your intuitive gifts? Yes, I would say a very vivid imagination, right? Think of the, the clairvoyance ability of being able to receive intuitive information through visions and images. There was also... Uh, in my family, I don't have a background in religion. There was a huge emphasis on nature connection. 
So at that young age, you know, every week going out in nature, you know, pausing and witnessing nature, communicating with the the plant spirits, the animal spirits and receiving that wisdom. So that was a part of my childhood as well. It's so, um, so fortunate, right? And then, and then when did you start actually giving others intuitive readings? You know, what's interesting is I didn't start prof- doing professional readings until 2014. But when I reflect back on my life, ever since I was a teenager, people were naturally drawn to me for intuitive insights. I would try and go to, you know, a gathering of friends. And there I was just sitting outside in a private place in the patio or the garden, doing these intuitive reading sessions for people before I even kind of knew what what it was or had a label for it. Oh, that's curious. So how did you go from sharing with people your insights to becoming a professional and even, you know, gaining more strength in all of your abilities. Because I mean, today Mm -hmm. you do Akashic readings, you teach classes, Mm -hmm. you are full on supporting others and becoming intuitive. So what was that transition for you to, to step out and say, yeah, this is who I am and here are my shingles? So I guess it's a little interesting because I would say my, my greatest passion is actually meditation. Okay. And so I, I stepped out and uh, in guiding meditation. And I went on a nine month tour in South America, putting on meditation workshops through various countries there. And what was interesting is people are like, okay, great. Yeah. Meditation, but we really want you for your, your intuitive readings and your intuitive insights. And so even though I was stepping forward with more of my passion with meditation and, and doing meditation workshops and classes, it's, it's as if life had a different plan for me because what kept coming in was people wanting my intuitive insights, wanting intuitive readings from me. So I think for me, it was about surrender and just going, okay, this is what keeps showing up. This is what spirit wants of me, life wants of me. I'm going to surrender and accept this path. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So let's let's get to kind of the topic that we're here yes. for. Is overcoming our blocks. And so what is it that we individuals knowingly or unknowingly do um, to block our intuition? So talking about overcoming intuitive blocks, I just want to first talk about maybe the, the two different ways we may receive or approach intuitive information. And that could be more of a, a random, a pr- right, random intuitive guidance coming in, which usually can be in moments of survival or maybe even safety. And the other approach could be, you know, focused, where we're actually taking that time out of our out of our life with that intention to receive intuitive guidance. And what can happen is we may not acknowledge things coming through as intuitive guidance because we have this specific way in which we think intuitive guidance should come through for us. So that could actually create a little bit of block where intuitive guidance is coming in, but we're not acknowledging. We might be ignoring it or denying it. So Renee, can you go a little bit deeper into the ways that we receive intuitive information? You talked about random and focused. What are those different, go deeper, like what are the ways? Yes, the different ways that we can receive intuitive information is think about your different senses you have. That's the the best way to kind of grasp it is right with our sight. We can receive visions or images. You may even receive intuitive information through your dream time. We receive intuitive guidance as messages or sometimes a deep knowingness within us. It can come through as different symbols Symbolism that comes, you know, when we're out and about, uh, a license plate, for example. Also through the smelling sensation, different scents that might come in 
for us. So those are just different ways that we receive intuitive guidance. And it's important to stay open and receptive and not grasp too tightly for our, our intuitive guidance to come in in a specific way that we're wanting. This, this concept of grasping too tightly, period, is not something that um, we would recommend for any abilities, any spiritual abilities, right? It's that desperation that is a block uh, from being able to really be receptive. Let's go a little further into the blocks and ways that we can move through and overcome any of the blocks. Yes. And talking about one of the major blocks that people do deal with is that very overactive mental mind where you have your thoughts coming up and you may be regularly engaging with those thoughts and that can create uh, a lot of noise. And our intuition will usually come in in a way that could be like a whisper or faint or in the background for us if we have that very active mental mind. And I just wanted to share just a, a quick tool that's really easy to do at home and apply and get started if you notice that you have a very active mental mind. So what I recommend if you have a very active mental mind is actually a candle flame meditation where you're just taking a moment to pause and let yourself just gaze upon the candle flame. And what you'll notice when you do that is it's so easy just to come into a deep state of peace and relaxation and focus. You'll notice that you won't be engaging with all of those thoughts floating around. So let's let's just transition for a moment and And just try this. Your full attention and awareness is gazing upon the candle flame. So that was just a quick little example of something that's really easy to do at home. I recommend starting with about five minutes at home where you're just allowing yourself to sit there and gaze upon the candle flame. And so that's really wonderful. I love doing that. And, and getting that stillness, having a focal point and the mind starts to still so then let's say someone wants to move into, they have a question and they're looking for some kind of symbol or answer. How might they create safe space or take the next steps to get their, their intuition? Yes, I love that question because creating that safe and protective space is so important because when we are opening ourselves to our intuition, we can be in that very receptive and vulnerable space. So I do recommend that you, you are creating a space where you're not gonna be dealing with interruptions and you might even communicate if you're living with other people to that you're taking some quiet time to not interrupt you because you wanna feel safe and protective in your environment. For, for me personally, I might, I might even add in doing uh, the Archangel Michael protection prayer, which is actually kind of calling in a guide to come in, Archangel Michael, to support with creating that stronger sense of safety and protection. And so then I can relax and be more open for that intuitive guidance to come through. Could you lead us through a, a little bit of a protection prayer? Sure. I would love to lead you through the Archangel Michael protection prayer. Uh, you, are you ready to do that now? Wonderful. So one of the first things when we're doing the Archangel Michael protection prayer is just having awareness of the outer layer of our aura. So you might even tune in 
with your aura that's around you and the recommended distance is about two feet out. So if you were to put your, your arm out, that's about two feet out. And so you're gonna wanna just check in and, and visualize that golden aura all around you, encompassing you completely like an egg. And here you are in the middle. And in just a moment, I'll be guiding the Archangel Michael protection prayer. And you may even feel called to just silently repeat it to yourself. Archangel Michael of divine source. of unconditional love. Please assist me in putting a thick 24 karat golden protection aura around me. May this thick 24 karat golden protection aura protect me from any intentional an unintentional, harmful energy. May this harmful energy be sent to Mother Earth, transformed to golden healing energy. and returned to its rightful owners. I am protected now. I am protected now. Now, is that something that you do before you do your Akashic readings? Yes, I actually will do it before my readings. I even did it before getting on the, the call with you today. And I will do it even uh, in my morning meditation practice. I will do the Archangel Michael protection prayer before I even go into meditation or any deeper type of spiritual work. Is that something that you started doing because of a particular reason? Yes. So the Archangel Michael protection prayer actually was given to me from the Akashic record. So I, I do also teach accessing your own Akashic record. And I was going through a really challenging time as traveling and I am an empath, so I feel and sense the emotions of others. And I was in this empath overwhelm to the point where I couldn't get out of bed. So I'm just like in bed for two days, can't get out because I'm in complete empath overwhelm with all the emotions and the heaviness. And so I opened access to my Akashic record and asked for support. And this prayer was given to me. And so I did the, the prayer and it was just instantaneous for me. And I, you know, I got up, I got up out of bed. I was uh, able to enjoy the rest of my travels, uh, but I, I'm deeply honored to have that prayer because it was gift, gift, gifted from the Akashic record. I'm so glad I asked. And I want to, I want to ask another question about the Akashic records while we're here, mm -hmm. just um, maybe for people who aren't really familiar with them, could you give us a 
basic explanation of what the Akashic Records are and why they might be something people would want to access for themselves? The Akashic Record could be thought of as an ever-evolving storehouse of information. So even when you're thinking about yourself right now, you have different thoughts that come up, different emotions. You make different choices. You take actions in your life. And you can imagine that all of that is stored, okay, in the central storehouse of information. And that would stretch beyond this specific human experience. So there is an acknowledgement of previous experience, previous life experiences, and also the think about when you make a choice for yourself, how that could spiral out and there could be this future potential or outcome that spirals out from that. And depending on what choice that you make in the present, different future potentials and outcomes could be possible for you. And so you're, you're having access to that information. So when someone comes to you for a Kaushik reading, what what can what did what do you do? What would someone expect? For an Akashic record reading, what somebody could expect is I would say, you know, having that deep sense of truth and clarity that comes through. Uh, one of my my dear clients, she used the example, she's like, wow, that that one Akashic record reading was like 20 th therapy sessions. So it can slice through those illusions and grasp on to what's true through that perspective of the soul. Yes, and that is such an important point. It's the soul perspective that really can support us in broadening and, and making better, better choices for ourselves. And so these are accessible, these Akashic records to anyone or the Akashic record who um, wants to access them. Is there a, a particular way people can intend that or, or move towards learning more about it? Yes, I do have Akashic record programs for learning to access your own Akashic record. And I completely agree with you. They're accessible to anyone who wants to answer that call and commit to that. And so I have those programs for accessing your own and also accessing others Akashic record. Love it. Thank you. Cool. Okay. I want to go, um, I want to go into this process. We were kind of midway through, right? We did the candle and found the stillness. We did the Archangel Michael prayer of protection. And so as I understand it, your next step has to do with setting intentions, correct? Yes, for setting intentions. So one thing that can greatly get overlooked when we're developing that connection with our intuitive guidance is that we can actually set boundaries and parameters around receiving our intuitive guidance. Okay. And it's also important with setting intentions, going through that self-reflection process of seeing if you're holding on to any expectations or going into receiving intuitive information where you're thinking you already know the answer or maybe holding on to a specific outcome to happen because those things are going to inhibit the complete accuracy of the information. So taking that time to set intentions for yourself before even approaching accessing intuitive information could be really supportive, as well as having boundaries and parameters around how you're receiving intuitive information. So it is all about that communication. Just like you were to com maybe communicate to a friend who was speaking in a way you couldn't understand, and you might say, oh, can you speak more slowly? You're speaking too quickly. I can't understand. And you can set those same parameters with your, your intuitive guidance. Maybe you could give us a couple examples of good intentions that you set. So some intentions for me that I set 
uh, one, one of the first intentions is to just whatever guidance wants to come through, it comes through. Okay. And so I'm keeping a sense of openness and receptivity. I'm not trying to control anything. So that's probably the first intention of mind is that whether I'm connecting with the Akashic record or guidance or spirit is just whatever wants to be delivered. I'm honoring that. And I'm just being that clean, clear vessel for that to come through. And any, any other? Yes. Other intentions that could be supportive are setting the intention for guidance to come through in a way that you can understand. Another intention is for guidance to come through that is applicable for you and your life in the present moment, because there is so much psychic information out there that's available to us, and it can create a sense of overwhelm or getting large downloads at a time where you can't sort it out. So even setting that intention to receive guidance that's applicable to you in the present moment could be a great, a great intention. And, and that's interesting because you said earlier you were having that empathic overload and that's where the Archangel protection prayer came from. So for people who are pretty empathic and might be really accessing too much too quickly, I love that you just offered set an intention, but from your experience being so sensitive and having such access to intuition how do you navigate life when, when you're so sensitive? Yes, yeah, something that's been greatly supportive to me is staying grounded. So that means having quiet time to myself, going out in nature, or even just going outside, feeling the fresh air, feeling my feet on the earth, uh, gardening or taking off my shoes, putting them in the soil, just any of those activities that really support you with staying in your human physical body and grounded to the earth. Great, great uh, recommendation for sure. Maybe my last question would be, what has been the most challenging part for you in being a born intuitive? The most challenging, I would say, was in my teenage years, and just going to school and being completely overwhelmed and not having that sense of maturity. When, when you're an empath, you're like a human lie detector test. And when somebody's words don't match with kind of what's going on inside, you'll pick up on that discrepancy. And for me, I, I would take it really personally. I like, why are people lying to me all the time? And I would take it really personally. And it was challenging for me to be uh, in groups of people, with people, uh, in public places. And I did have to learn tools and skills on how to manage my gifts in a healthy way. I did go to Psychic Horizons in San Francisco for a few years just to learn those those skills to be a healthy intuitive in the world because I did struggle a lot. And But most of my struggle was with the being empathic and especially as a teenager. And so today your life, um, you said gardening, stay grounded. Are there other lifestyle choices that you make that really help you keep your intuitive abilities clean and keep yourself from that overwhelm? So practices that I do today, I, I would say a lot of it is about being present. So whatever I'm approaching, bringing in that, that present. So I know we live in a world where people are constantly wanting us to multitask. And I, I'm trying to not do that so much and really be present with whatever I'm doing. If that's, you know, cooking dinner, not being, not adding in other distractions and being fully present with the process of just cooking dinner or washing the dishes or, or doing household chores, but bringing in that, that sense of presence to whatever activity that I do. I love it. That's a, such an important skill that I have been hearing um, 
a lot in the summit as I've been interviewing so many incredible people. Presence is a key. And so being out of the present moment would block our intuition. Is that true? Yes, it could block our intuition and that and we might even find ourselves uh, overwhelmed in thoughts or engaging in thoughts, disconnected from our body, disconnected from truth and what's really going on. So, Renee, how can people learn more about you and your work? Where do where do we find you? Yes, the best way I would say is to probably go to my website, which is uh, Akashic learning institute.com uh, there's uh, great even resources if you were just wanting to access your own healing meditations and do those on your own that's a free resource and just getting to know more about me and and my offerings my website would be a great a great place perfect 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 so is there something you'd like to end with uh just acknowledging you know, everyone in the audience for just being here and listening and showing up because that could be your first step in truly allowing that deep, profound connection with your own intuition to flourish and develop. Well said, Renee. So great to have you here. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Joy. And I want to thank everyone for joining us. And I hope you absolutely enjoyed this conversation in the Psychic and Intuitive Abilities Summit.